Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Oshina, I'm glad that you're here. I'm gonna be sharing all of the books that I read in June. Um, I am filming this on Wednesday, June 29th, so I have a day to read a book. I don't think I'll finish one before the month is up. So I'm just going to do this now. And yes, I'm excited to talk about these books. This is my favorite video to film, I just love talking about the books that I've read. So thank you for being here. Okay, I'm gonna start with my favorite ones and work down to my least favorite ones just because I read some really good books mixed in with like a bunch of DNFs. So I, I wanna just talk about the good ones. I do have my phone on because I'm technically uh, working from home. So um, if I do have to cut, it's because I had to answer a phone. Okay, so let's just start. So I read this book this month because I read the first book last month. This is Love and the Silver Lining by Tamiel Gray. This is the second book in the State of Grace series. I think it's called State of Grace. This is so good. Okay, I still think I like the story better. No, yes. Maybe it's the characters. I think I like the characters in the first one better, but the story of this one is so good and the romance is so good. She like sneaks a love triangle into her books in such a sneaky way that is actually good, that actually makes sense why there's a love triangle. <sighs> it's so good. Yeah, so this follows Darcy. She is Cameron's best friend. And so if you, you met her in the first book, um, and I'm not even gonna say who her love interest is, but I mean, it says on the back, which is annoying because when I went into this book, I didn't read what it was about. Like I do that with romance books because sometimes the back spoils who they're with. If there's a love triangle, which there is, there's a love triangle in the first book and in this book. And there's probably gonna be one in the second book, I mean in the third book. And I'm not gonna read what they're about because I don't wanna know who is doing what. Because when I started this book, I thought I knew who she was gonna end up with, but I was wrong, okay? Yeah, so this is the second time that I've read this. So I went in knowing who she ends up with, which was really satisfying to just like analyze everything and to like read into his behaviors before she knew and before he let on that he liked her. It's so great. It's so great. Okay, anyways, Darcy was going to go away for a mission trip and she was gonna like do this long term. Like she wanted to be a missionary and stuff happens to where it has to get canceled and she has no plans, she has nowhere to live, no job. She doesn't know what she's gonna do. She got all of her money back for the mission trip. So she has money, like she has savings, but she doesn't know what to do. So stuff happens about that. Okay, I really don't want to say anything else, but it's just written so well and if you like dogs, dogs do play a part in the plot. She's a really good dog trainer, so that's kind of what she ends up doing as a job and it's good, so yeah. Okay, five out of five for sure. Love it. Okay, and thank you Bailey for getting me this book. My subscriber Bailey bought this for me and sent it to me and I'm so blessed because I loved it. Okay, there we go. Gushed enough about that one book. Continuing. The only other five star fiction book that I read is Iscariot by Tosca Lee and I can't wait to talk about this book. Okay, I cannot believe. Okay, I forget what year it was. I don't know if it was last year or the year before but one of the past years, a couple booktubers that I watched, this was their favorite book of the year. And when they were like, Iscariot, oh, it's about Judas Iscariot. I was like, I don't wanna read that. Like, no, thank you. I, I don't wanna read about a disciple betraying Jesus. Like, why would I wanna read from his perspective, you know? But I was just, it was just the time. Like, it just was calling to me. I just was like, I need to read that book. So, let me just adjust, I feel like this is crooked. Okay, yeah. I don't know what to say about this book. <laughs> so Iscariot, it is like what everyone says. You follow the perspective of Judas Iscariot. Um, it starts when he is a little boy and you follow his life 
up to adulthood. Yeah, and then basically until he meets Jesus and then until he betrays him. And I just found it so fascinating. It was written really well because it was in first person and it was like basically Judas just like talking and sharing his thoughts. We got to like really see into his mind and obviously it's a fiction story, like this is all speculation, but it was a really like kind perspective on Judas that I truly had never considered before. And seeing the build up to when he does betray Jesus, I don't even know how to describe it. It just made sense in a really sad way. And then you know how he ends, sorry. Um, I just was like, oh, it just really hit me. I loved it. It was definitely like a slow, methodical, like day to day almost book, but not even day to day there because there were time jumps, but more so like thought to thought, like it was really a deep dive into Judas's psyche and what makes him who he is to betray Jesus. And it just was brilliant. Like I thought it was so well done. I, I loved this book. I think it's masterful. Like it's so good. <laughs> I just, what can I say? Like it was very thought provoking. Um, yeah, I loved it. I did like look at the re reviews after and there's a lot of five stars, but there's a lot of like DNFs or lower ratings because people say that it's boring. Like that seems to be the main reason people don't finish it or don't like it. And I can understand that, but I was there for it. It, I think it needed to be slow. It wasn't like an exciting book because it did kind of have this like sadness as I was reading because I, I know the end, right? We, we know how he ends and it's, it's really sad, but I just was fascinated by this story. So yeah, I, I highly recommend it. If that sounds interesting to you, give it a chance. All right, the last five star of the month is Gentle and Lowly by Dane Ortland. I hoped that I would give this five stars, but it was an overwhelming five stars. I loved this book, it's so good. There's definitely like more chapters that hit my heart stronger than others. Overall, I thought this book was so well written, well researched and simple and easy to understand, but so profound, nice, quick, short chapters, lots of verses quoted and just like really deep thoughts that change your perspective. If you have any preconceived notions of the character of Jesus, this book gives you a new way of looking at it that is so beautiful and merciful and gracious and loving and it's the best thing ever. Highly recommend. I think lots of people could get a lot out of this. Um, you probably know, but there was a like book club being run by Krista on her channel books and jams she did a live show every sunday discussing six chapters um in a group and i was there for three of the live shows so i'll link chris's channel and um i guess all the live shows too why not i loved it i've saved all of the live shows so that i can watch them again because they were truly so encouraging and especially to be a part of it to see myself talking and to see you know, the other ladies talking with me. I just felt so encouraged after each week and I'm so thankful to have read this book and th to have this community. It's like so encouraging that I get to like m blend, <laughs> mend, blend, fuse my love of reading and books with my faith and my love for Jesus. So I'm thankful. So recommend it for sure. Okay, so on to... Well, actually, one more positive review and the rest aren't going to be so positive. So um, the, the next book I want to talk about is, I gave this four out of five stars. It's Until the Dawn by uh, la -la, Elizabeth Camden. I really liked this book. There, there were a few things that I was like, if this was different, it'd be five stars. So I'll talk about it, okay? This book, I do have a video where I shared a little bit about it too. Once again, I'll link videos down below if they relate to any of the books in this video, okay? So yeah, this this book is about a girl who kind of grew up in this small town off the coast of New York and there's like this huge manor that is abandoned because the family that 
has lived there for hundreds, well, yeah, hundreds-ish of years, thinks there's a curse on their family and that the house itself is cursed, so they've abandoned it. And she lives there because she upkeeps it, but she also has kind of secretly started a weather monitoring thing on the roof where she like, yeah, measures the weather and then sends it into her government and it, she truly does that. And it sounds like really silly, but like it totally works for the story and I liked it. Um, so she's like, you know, a science nerd kind of. And then it opens with the great grandson and his son come up to the land and are like, who's in our house? And they're like, we're moving in and we have plans to tear it down. So get out of here, take your equipment. You're, you're done here. And she's like, no, because like she loves the land first of all, because she grew up on it. And then her weather equipment, <laughs> it needs to be high. So that house is perfect. So it works out so that she gets hired by him for stuff. And it's obviously a romance as well. Um, so it, it was super fun, like written super, super well. I liked the setting, the character of the guy, whatever his name was, I don't keep track of names, Quentin. That's his name, Quentin. He was so rude most of the time. Even when he was trying to not be rude, he was so rude. And it was a little over the top because I was like, I mean, this girl had dignity for sure. She stood up for herself, but, and it, I know it's the time period too, like fine, but still he was so rude to her. And I feel like, how could she possibly fall in love with him? He definitely like, you know, changed a little bit and like, he was also an atheist and she was like full blown committed to Jesus. So that was so cool, like to see that faith aspect. But again, like, I just, I just didn't quite see how that relationship would be a good, good thing to happen, you know? I mean, by the end, yes, there's a total transformation of him, but it wasn't shown deep enough soon enough before romance started happening and I was just like uh, 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 you know so that's the only thing okay just my little quirks about it but it still was so fun I read the whole thing there was like a mystery with his family that you like figure out and stuff the whole science versus faith conversation was great like it was really good and again love the setting and yeah so I, I would recommend it but I, I could see how the romance and the character of Quentin would drive you nuts. But I, it was like written so quick and easy that I was like, whatever, okay, I'll keep reading. So that's that. Okay, sorry if things changed, I had to answer the phone. Okay, on to the rest of these books. So the rest of what I say is gonna be not as positive, so be prepared. Um, first up is Beyond the Tides by Liz Johnson. <laughs> Uh, this is gonna get, I do have a video for this too, so check it out. Um, I reviewed it in the video. This was our book club pick for my Christian book club, and we really know how to pick them. We, we really don't know how to pick them. Okay, ladies, what is wrong, okay? I can't take it. <laughs> it's actually very funny. Um, it's bonding when you like collectively think a book is like, <laughs> what? Okay, I mean, okay. <laughs> so this book is about a girl whose dad owns a lobster fishing boat. I think it's lobster, I, I kind of forget. It has to do with fish, I think it's lobster. And he needs to retire because his wife is sick. And he actually, is thinking of selling it to his right-hand man, who also is her childhood nemesis. And she's like, no, dad, you cannot sell it to him. I will take it. I will take the business. I will run it. She also has a fear of boats. So great. But the dad's like, all right, you know what I'm gonna do? You both have to work it for the summer and whoever does best gets it. Or it's not really does best, but like whoever decides they want it most gets it. And you both have to work together. You have to. And she's like, fine. And he's like, 
all right, I'm basically gonna be doing all the work because she, she literally knows nothing about lobster fishing. So that sounded really funny and it started really good. Like it started funny, I liked this girl, it was funny. And truly that premise and the whole plot I thought was great. However, the romance bits were over a line that I've never even, well, I haven't had to consider in a while, you know? <laughs> so you probably all have heard people say, me say, numbing cream. <laughs> I can't say without laughing. Numbing cream. Okay, it's not as like out there as you think, but basically the girl, her first day out, you wake up at 5 a.m. and start fishing. And she's like so sore from it because she's never on a boat and she doesn't like do heavy labor. So she's like incredibly sore. And he has this magical numbing cream that he's like, how are you gonna get your back? And she's like, I don't know. He's like, I'll do it for you. So he rubs numbing cream on her back. And that would have been fine but seriously, the way the author described it was like so ridiculous. Like it was definitely inappropriate, but because of how ridiculous it felt, it was like funny, but inappropriate. <laughs> they barely even liked each other. And he's like, you know, rubbing her back and she's going, oh, it feels so good. You know, I'm like, dude, this is not okay. <laughs> like, yeah. So that was the main thing. Okay, and then they do make out once and just the descriptions of how they felt about it were just like a little much for a Christian book because this was a Christian, they were, they were Christians. So pretty sure that it just it doesn't fit, you know? So that's the book. <laughs> it's funny. It is funny. And yeah. Okay, next is The View from Coral Cove by Amy Clipston two stars because the characters the whole story it just felt like juvenile it felt it felt like a string of a string of convenient moments for them to like it just didn't feel authentic I guess for them to like run into each other all the time and he didn't technically have feelings for her and it just like it felt like it was forced very forced I just didn't like it so that was too bad but yeah you follow this girl who moves to this small town she works at a place one of her relatives passes away I think it's her aunt and she inherits her aunt's business so she starts working in it and the guy owns a vet, uh, yeah, a vet SPCA kind of thing, and um, they are across the, tree, uh, the street from each other. He has a daughter. In my description of it one time, I thought she had the kid, but it's actually the guy who has the kid. And the relationship actually between the girl and the little girl, <laughs> the, the woman and the daughter of the guy, was really cute. That was my favorite part, but other than that, the story kind of lacked everything for me, so didn't love it. Okay, and two DNFs. <laughs> so first is Meet Me in the Margins. I don't have much to say about this. It just, I didn't, didn't jive with the writing and then didn't like the character, the main girl. I just didn't like her personality. I didn't really like the way it was written. I could just tell it was trying to be funny, like writing wise, and I didn't like it. It didn't work for me so yeah don't really listen to me about Melissa Ferguson like I'm just like an odd cookie yeah I just don't like her I, I don't know not her as a person but her books yeah okay last book is Just Look Up by Courtney Walsh a raccoon dude oh raccoon is he is he coming oh no Go. You are not allowed to eat my stuff. Good thing I caught him. He, he, this is why that rock is there. Also, I'm getting new balloons over there. Happy. 
Okay, I need to go. All right, I defeated the raccoon. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I scared it away. Okay, last book. Did I finish? Yeah, okay. Last book, oh, right, okay. <laughs> just Look Up by Courtney Walsh. I really did give it a chance. Like, I'm not out to, you know, hate on these authors. I think if I like talk about books in a row that I don't like, I feel like negative, but I'm truly, I don't know. It just, whatever, okay. Her book, this book, it, there were a lot of characters at the beginning. The way it was written, I didn't feel connected to any of them, including the main girl that you're following. And then the way the guy just came in, it felt like he was kind of thrown in and I also knew nothing about him. And there's like a history with them that wasn't, it just was like too much because also her brother was like in the hospital and I just was like, what is going on? It was just, I don't know. I just didn't like the way it was written and I didn't like the characters. But I am not giving up on this author. I There's gotta be a book that she's written that I like because Becky Wade recommends her. They're friends, I think. Like, how can I do this? I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah. If you have a recommendation by this author, let me know. That's it. <laughs> that's my wrap up. Uh, thank you for watching. I guess, yeah, that's what I get for doing all my favorites first and ending with the not so great ones. So, you know, rewind and see how happy I am about some books that I read, you know? Anyway, um, yeah, but I, I'm still happy with my reading month. I read Iscariot and Gentle and Lowly last, so they're like precious to my mind. And so I love reading, it's all good. <laughs> and yeah, I'm excited about my July reading. I think it might be a slower month because that uh, I'm moving and I'm still working full time and yeah and it's the summer I'm gonna try to like enjoy the heat you know so I don't know how much reading I'm gonna get done but you saw my TBR thank you for watching my videos you guys thank you for being here and I will see you in my next video bye guys I don't know and I don't really care so yeah three stars two and a half